Dear President Constantinesco, ladies and gentlemen, this indeed is, is a great event in celebration of democracy, freedom, and pluralism in Eastern Europe. And it is an honor for me to be part of the gathering which bring together so many old friends and esteemed colleagues. Colleagues, President Constantinescu, I would like to wish you happy birthday again because you, I wish you very long and healthy life in the future. And our heartfelt gratitude goes to President Continesco and our Romanian host for this event. Dear friend, history is never easily made. Wars waged for different reasons mark most of our past and shape our future. Occasionally, however, history is written by leaders who change the world for the better by peaceful means. The dismantling of the Soviet Union that led to the collapse of communist regimes was one such auspicious event. Certainly, there were complex, wide-ranging reasons as to why the communist regime, communist empire, fell apart. But the leadership in Moscow, who guided the final stage of the process of the undoing of the Soviet Union, along with the demands of the people, listened to the call of history and thus avoided the past of futile resistance. The real heroes of the communist revolution in Eastern Europe are, of course, the people of those countries. We salute them once again for their sacrifices and for their determination in their resistance to communist and dictator dictatorship. We also must express our debt and thankfulness to the leaders who fought for the rights and freedom of their people at the front, forefront. We heard inspiring messages from them at the onset of this conference. Mr. President, Turkey made a transition to democracy in the mid-1940s, joined NATO in 1952, and firmly anchored itself in the Euro-Atlantic community of democratic nations. During the Cold War years, having the longest border with Soviet Union, Turkey was the bulwark of defense against communism in the outermost flank of Western Bloc. We never abandoned our hope that authoritarian regimes would not last and that in the end, democracy and freedom would prevail. That they arrived some 25 years ago for Eastern Europe, blatantly, but it did come. Turkey was quick in immediately recognizing and acknowledging the new political realities of Western Europe, expressing and extending full support to new countries of the region as they finally began to test the fruits of independence and freedom. The transition to democracy was not even in all the affected countries, but progress was steadily because the people wanted that way. We must congratulate the people because 25 years is not really a long time for such a grand transformation, but the people have accomplished a great deal in laying the foundations of democracy on firm grounds. Turkey was enthusiastic supporter of the rise of democracy in Eastern Europe and the integration of the region in Euro-Atlantic institutions. We thus strongly urged and backed the enlargement of both NATO and the European Union. Open-door policy still is policy of Turkey. 
We believe that inclusion of Eastern Europe in the Euro-Atlantic community would not only strengthen that, that community, but also bring stability, security, and prosperity to Eastern Europe by contributing to its development. History proved us right because the last 25 years witnessed impressive political and economic progress in all these countries. When we look into the future, we have to admit that there are also problems and challenges. It is clear that the collapse of the Soviet Union has not fully, has not been fully digested by the Russian Federation. The events in Georgia in 2008, the illegal annexation of Crimea, and the ongoing turmoil in Ukraine, accompanied by Russian efforts to organize spheres of economic, political, and security in former Soviet territories, complicate Euro-Atlantic stability and peace. Cold War is finished, but nuclear arms remain. Arms races still continue. The West is applying sanctions against Russia, and Russia is making reciprocal threats. All this points to a simple but a powerful fact we have to face. There is mistrust. The West does not trust Russia, and Russia does not trust the West. This is why, as we look at into the future, the first order of business should be to, bu to build networks of trust between the Euro-Atlantic and Eurasian community of nations. This initially requires a Pacific settlement of the situation in Ukraine, consistent with territorial integrity of the country. There has to be an, an agreement on setting other conflicts in the region by means of legitimate foreign policy instrument. I believe for the first time in recent history, we can all win and forge a better life for our peoples. Democracy and freedom are rare and precious commodities. Let us appreciate and enrich their value. Turkey is an enduring friend of the countries of Eastern Europe. Our solidarity will continue. Romania paid a high price in ending the communist dictatorship and has made great strides in the last 25 years. This conference is an attestation to Romanians' pride and accomplishments. Once again, I thank President Constantinescu for bringing us all together at this conference, a reflection of his vision and statesmanship and his deep commitment to democracy, freedom, and human rights. Thank you very much.